things start turning in my head and I began to think of, you know, all these things that can lead us on the path that God has called us to. But at the same time, I began to think about the things that can cause us to sway from that path. The things that can cause us to be distracted from what God has called us to. You see, in Elevate, Matt usually talks to us about the process and how we're in this process to get to the position that God has called us to. But while we're in this process, we're going through things in life that cause our character to be built in order to sustain that position. But tonight, I want to talk to you guys about two things that can cause that process to just be pushed to the wayside. And one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about tonight is comparison. And when I'm talking about comparison, I literally mean when we sit back and we look at someone else and we see what they have and we see what we don't have. Or what we do have and what they don't have and how we're better than them. The other thing that I want to talk to you guys about tonight is our confidence. Whether it is that we have a lack of confidence or whether we have way too much confidence and we seem pretty confident. And so before I get into what this whole message is going to be about tonight, I want you guys to just take a second and begin to look at the people that are sitting around you. Look at the person that's to the left and to the right of you. I want you to look at their hair color. I want you to look at the clothes that they're wearing. I want you to imagine what kind of jobs they might have just by the appearance that they give to you. You know, someone might be a dog trainer or someone might even be, you know, in school and a barista at... Starbucks, you know, just by the way that the clothes that they wear, we can kind of guess these things on what kind of job that they have. But so often in our walks with Christ, we do the same thing. We begin to look at the people that are around us, and we begin to lose sight of the path that God has called us to. For instance, if I'm rushing to school and I'm driving in my car, and then all of a sudden I begin to look at the car that's on the right of me, and I'm like, dang. That's a nice Chrysler 300 right there. Shoot, they got some 24s up on that thing. All right, I see you, sir. Not even paying attention to what's in front of me. And then all of a sudden, I look over to my left hand, so I'm like, oh, shoot. Look at that truck, man. I graduated in May. Man, baby, when I get done with school, I'm going to go get a loan, and I'm going to get a truck just like that. And then, bam! I hit the person in front of me. Because I wasn't paying attention to what was going on. I was too busy and worried about the car that was to the right of me and about the car that was to the left of me that I didn't even notice that the car in front of me had pushed their brakes and that I was coming to a red light. You see, when we begin to focus to the pe on the people that are to our left and to our right, we lose sight of God. We lose sight of the things that he's called us to. We begin to like focus on what they're doing or what he's doing. And we're not paying attention to what we're supposed to be doing. But you see, when we're focused here, focused on God, when we're praying, when we're fasting, when we're reading God's word, we know exactly what he's called us to. And we're not worried about what the other people are doing around us. And so it brings me to my first point. We have to learn how to stop comparing ourselves to everyone that's around us. In 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 20, it states, For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, and that it would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged all the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet there is one body. You see, what this says is it says God arranged the members of the body. God specifically made you the way that you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be like the person that's to the left and to the right of you. 
He chose you and he designed you to fit in this machine called God's kingdom that is supposed to work. And it's like gears. And when gears work, they turn into each other and cause the next one to move, which causes the next ones to move. But you see, when this gear gets jealous of what this gear gets to do, and it decides that it wants to be just like this one, all these other gears are working hard to make this whole thing move. But it's not going anywhere. Because this gear isn't where it's supposed to be. It says... Um, Um, whenever I was coming up with this, I decided to think of things that um, we usually compare ourselves to. And I think um, one of the biggest, or two of the biggest things that we usually compare ourselves with other people is our appearance and how much money we have. Um, so often, we look at people and they're dressed nice, and we automatically assume that this person is completely rich, and we decide that they, you know, have all this money, they have a great job, and all these things like that. But you see, that's not always the case. For instance, say I just got done working out at the gym. I'm in a huge, large t-shirt, and I got my track shorts on, and I got like my muddy Nikes that I have, and I just walked out of the gym, my hair's all a wreck, and I'm just, you know, I'm covered in sweat, and I'm walking out to my car, and then all of a sudden, here comes this pretty girl that has like a fresh tan, with her hair up, she's got her gym bag, and she's just like, I'm going to the gym right now. Uh. She's got like her pink and teal like workout uniform all Nike with her matching Nike shoes, you know, it kind of makes you think of DeWitt's, you know, dream girl. <laughs> so, um, but I see this girl, right? And instantly when I see her, I begin to look at myself and I'm like, dude, what was I thinking? Like, for real? Like, she's like got makeup on and she's going to the gym. <laughs> like, what is up? What is she doing that I'm not doing because I'm working my butt off and I don't even look that good. But you see, <laughs> DeWitt said she was trying to match. <laughs> but you see, guys, we often compare our worst day to everybody else's best day. <laughs> and so we have to realize that they have days like that too. And who knows, maybe I've seen that girl in the gym a million times, but I never realized her because I didn't pay attention because she wasn't, you know, oh, hey, I'm going to go do my Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> But also at the same time, when it comes to money, we look at other people's jobs and we look at the things that they have and we begin to say, man, I wish I had that job. But you know, like I'm just barely making it by. I'm in college. I'm just trying to finish so I can move on to the next thing. And you see, guys, it doesn't matter what job we have right now. Like we're all moving on to greater and better things. Like where you're at, you have to be the best that you can be. Do all that you can do because you need to embrace the season that you're in right now so you don't miss the point of why God put you there in the first place. Um, my next thing that I have for you guys is we need to realize that God designed us to be who we are. In Romans 12, 4 through 6, it says, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. You see, guys, what that is saying right there is like the things that cause us to be different, the things that set us apart from everyone that is around us, from the person that's on the left and on the right of us, those things that make us different and make us, you know, kind of weird, those are the things that God gave us for a reason. We're supposed to use those things. It's what the scripture says. It says, let us use them. You see, we were designed to be who we are because God called us to reach a certain person. God called us to reach certain people. And if we're trying to be someone that we're not, we're not going to reach those people. God's going to have to call up someone else to do the job that you were originally placed for. 
So at this time, if I could have Matt and Jordan come up here for an illustration that I have for you guys. Um, Matt, if you would let Jordan wear your jacket. And Jordan, if you would let Matt wear your jacket and hat. Ooh. Dropped his hat. Okay. <laughs> I smoke on my lips. Extra small. You see here? Let me see. Let's see. We're going to try to make Jordan's hair look just like Matt's really yeah, fast. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> So as you're walking down the path that God has for your life, you're able to sustain. You're able to use your gifts. It says in Psalms 139, 16, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You see, guys, God's already ordered the path that we're supposed to take. That's why he's already given us the gifts. That's why he's already prepared us for the people that we're supposed to reach. The next thing that we need to know is that we're all gifted by God. Sometimes we just get so wrapped up into comparing ourselves with the people that are on the left and the right of us that we begin to trick ourselves into thinking that we have the same exact gifts and the same exact calling that that person has. So how many of you, growing up, had that friend that thought that they could sing? Anybody? <laughs> how many of you still have friends that think that they can sing? <laughs> All right. I remember in high school, um, one of my friends and I decided that we were going to audition for the worship team at my church. And um, after the worship audition, um, my friend, who really wasn't that bad at singing, but was pretty bad at singing, um, our worship pastor came up to my friend and he just basically said, like, I know people are called to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. 
but you just aren't one that needs a mic in front of your mouth. And so I looked at our worship pastor and I was just like, no, he didn't. I'm like, do that. I'm so sorry. I wish you could have made it. Like, you know, and that may seem a little harsh, but, you know, it saved my friend from a lot of years of going down this path that wasn't created for my friend. All of us need to begin to figure out what we're good at so we're no longer chasing dreams that weren't made for us. How often do we see people that are walking down this path and, you know, they're somewhat good at it, but they're talented in so many other areas, but they are thoroughly convinced that this is what God has called them to, just simply because most of their friends, that's what they're called to. And so they're like, oh, I'm going to go with them. You see, we have to be the ones that stand up and realize that we need to help our friends and help lead them and direct them and help them to know what their gifts are. But also at the same time, we need to know what our gifts are. It all rolls back to 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12. We're all a part of one body, and we all have different characteristics and different gifts about us that make us unique. And we need to figure out what those gifts are so that we can begin to do what God has called us to do. And you see, some of you are probably asking, well, how do I figure out what I'm called to do? Well, majority of the time, the things that you're somewhat better at than most people are good at, that's usually what God has called you to you see, some of us have a bend towards more artistic abilities. So, you know, maybe maybe you're called to do music or, you know, called to paint or, you know, called to be like graphic designer or something like that. But then some of us are more like knowledgeable. So some of us are more called to be like a pastor or called to, you know, lead people or things like that. So usually what you have more of a bend to, that's what God's gifted you with. And you see, once we begin to accept the gifts that we have, our confidence will then begin to turn out to be a lot better. But if we don't accept our gifts and we continue to compare ourselves to those that are around us, our confidence is still going to be lacking. Or we're going to have too much confidence because we're trying to make up for the fact that we are so insecure about the things that are inside of us. You see, our confidence plays a major role in following the path that God has for us. Now, if I came up to, in front of you guys and I was lacking confidence, and I decided to stand up here and be like, Hi, my name is Aubrey, and um, today I'm going to talk to you guys um, about confidence and and how to stand in God's path. None of you guys would listen to me. You guys would think like, oh, that girl doesn't know what she's talking about. And then on the other hand, if I'm standing over here and I'm like, all of y'all are doing this the wrong way. All of y'all need to be doing what I'm doing because I'm following God. I'm doing the right things. So you need to do exactly what I'm doing because I know the way. I know exactly how to do this. I don't struggle with comparing myself to others. And I don't struggle with my confidence. Because, you know what, I'm better than all y'all anyways, so, you know, blah, 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 blah. Y'all wouldn't listen to me. You would all get up and walk out of this room. <laughs> so some of us have our confidence misplaced. Some of us have our confidence in the wrong area. But there's a man in the Bible whose name is Paul. He's one of the greatest men of God that I can think of besides Jesus. He wrote majority of the New Testament in one of his books, he makes a bold statement about himself. In Philippians 3, 12, he says, I don't mean to say I'm perfect. I haven't learned all that I should, even yet. But I keep working toward the day when I'm finally all that Christ saved me for and wants me to be. You see, even Paul didn't have it all together. And that's the glory of it. We don't have to have it all together to stand up here and speak to our Elevate family. We don't have to have it all together to be able to stand up and lead worship. We don't have to have it all together to witness to our friends and tell them about Christ and who he is. We just have to be real. 
and have to know that our confidence is found in Christ. You see, in Philippians 4.13, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, so often I think we have this verse so confused and so misplaced in life because it's so overused by so many people. This verse doesn't mean that our football team is going to win just because they believe in God. Or it doesn't mean that our favorite baseball team is going to win the World Series just because they pray before their games every time. That's not how God strengthens us to do anything. You see, when Paul was talking about this scripture, right before this, he says, I've gone through highs in life. And I've gone through lows in life. And you know what? I found out through every single part of it is that God strengthens me to do what I'm called to do. God has given me the gifts and the abilities to do what he told me to do. And then he continues, or then in 2 Corinthians 3, 4 through 5, he says, such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves, to claim anything for ourselves, do it. <laughs> Not to claim anything for ourselves, but for our confidence comes from God. You see, guys, what this is saying is we don't have the authority to decide whether or not what we are doing is right or wrong, or what somebody else is doing is right or wrong. And we don't have the authority to say, well, just because they're doing it, I deserve to do it too. You see, that's not what we have. The confidence comes from God. God is the one who gives the final authority. He is the one who ultimately tells us what we are called to do. And so tonight, on your Elevate announcement sheet, on the one side, there's a side that you can take notes of my sermon. And so if you guys would just pull that out. And I have a trash can up here. And if you didn't get an Elevate flyer, you guys can come up here and grab one. But tonight, we're literally going to throw away the things that we compare ourselves to. The reasons why we have a lack of confidence or we have too much confidence. So if you guys would come up here and grab a pen or grab this piece of paper, I want you guys to begin to write down the things that cause you to have a lack of confidence. Or the things that you compare yourself to. Because tonight we're going to push past these things. These things are going to be removed from our lives. So we're just going to take a moment. And as everybody fills these out, Lael's going to play a song for us. And so I just pray that you guys would just begin to reflect. And then at the end, I'll just come back up and I'll pray over you guys. So as you guys are writing, um, I just really want you guys to just begin to write the things that you compare yourselves to daily. Whether it's a person, whether it's like something about people, or, you know, maybe it's a reason why you lack confidence. You know, what is that thing that causes you to lack confidence? Or what is that thing that causes you to like have to seem like you're better at it? just so you have more confidence. And as you're done writing, if you guys would just come up here and toss them in this trash can for me. I think that this proves every single one of us in this room have things that we compare ourselves to. Or every single one of us in this room, we all have insecurities that cause us to have a lack of confidence or that cause us to have too much confidence to make up for. My plan tonight was to actually burn these, but um, I didn't ask early enough to be able to do this. I thought of this last night. Um, so we're just going to put the lid on top of it. So if everyone would run up here a little bit before I shut this off.
God, I just thank you for tonight, God. God, I pray that the ones who came up here and wrote down their problems, God, I pray that you would just begin to remove those comparisons from their life. Totally take that mind game out, God, that it is not of you. God, I pray that there would be no, no more comparison in their life. I pray that confidence would no longer be an issue that they have to deal with, God, but that they would boldly stand for you and know that their confidence comes from you. I pray that their lives would be so full of Christ, that they would be so overwhelmed with joy in Jesus. God, I pray for their hearts. I pray for their endurance, God, as they continue to go down this path that you've called them to, Father. I pray that you would just direct their footsteps and help them to know that when the, when the trials of comparison and when the trials of confidence come in their lives, they're able to just take a next step and know that you're the one that's guiding them and that they don't have to be like the people around them. God, I praise you and I thank you for everything that you've done tonight. In your precious name I pray, amen. Amen. Yeah, good Amazing.